I always love it when it says that. <laughs> Recording in progress. All it's right, a, Max. Hi. <laughs> oh, we've had so many problems. Max kept coming up like uh, with his, his microphone was saying it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was me, of course. Look. <laughs> <laughs> was, look. I, had, I had to reboot my computer, but we only worked it out after Max went through a tortuous process of trying every new piece of hardware and every possible configuration on his machine. And every single laptop I have, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Although having said that, your voice is very echoey. I'm wondering, are you are you on your mic mic or are you on the laptop mic? I'm on my No, I don't think you are. No, I can't hear it. All right. Yeah. That's okay. Don't worry, we can still hear you. Yeah, that's the one. Maybe just click on the thing that says use the proper uh-huh. mic. No, that one. Yeah, yeah. You see, it was Max's fault. Don't worry, folks. <laughs> uh, I took him through it and we sorted out all the problems. All right. So welcome. Cool. And we, we're going to have, we have 30 minutes we got or less. 30 minutes, including a 30 minute Q and a. Yeah. Uh, so over to the Q and a, uh, now we're going to have, um, we're going to have 30 minutes max. Oh, excuse the pun to go through stuff and so make it quite a quick one. Uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, group heads. And specifically, this is a question that I see popping up all the time. I see actually not just the question popping up huge amount of confusion over mm-hmm. this over this area and i don't, don't know an awful lot about it so i'm actually going to play the dumb person who's asking the questions uh because i am the dumb person asking i'm gonna the questions. play the dumb person answering the question <laughs> so we're the perfect to... yeah it's the dumb and dumber show ladies and gentlemen um trademark does not apply and uh and so this is the, the question is about group heads and whether the saturated group heads are better than the e61 and you say, ah, oh, yeah, you know, it's better. What? Okay, but I want to really understand is, what I want to understand is a few things. First of all, I want to understand what better even means. And generally people are talking about temperature stability, mm-hmm. but then there's temperature stability for one shot or for multiple shots. So we're going to take that into the right context. Then there's the question of whether you're running an E61 group head on a heat exchanger machine or a dual boiler, or I guess a single boiler machine. And we kind of want to take that out of the equation because we want to be looking at group heads here, not the issues brought into the equation by, you know, other technologies, heat exchanger, et cetera. So I think, tell me if I'm wrong here, if we Mm -hmm. just want to look at efficient group heads and like where, you know, one may be be more predictable better than the other, we should be looking at the E61 group heads on either a dual boiler or a single boiler machine versus a saturated group head. Is that... Was that a fair assessment? Yes. Because we haven't talked about this. So I'm kind of, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants a little bit here. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, hmm. So that's what I want to look at really. And the question people always go and you hear people talking about temperature stability on E61s and running cooling flushes and all sorts of people get very mm-hmm. excited about it. it's a three second cooling flush. It's a six second cooling flush. Do you even need to do a cooling flush? And then other people come along and say, whoa, 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 Tiger, there's been changes in the way, you know, the the manufacturers make those um, machines with the E61 group heads, and now temperature stability isn't an issue. And really, we just want to try and clear up this confusion. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll tell you why, in particular, I want to clear up this confusion is because machines with saturated group heads, not exclusively, but generally Mm -hmm. more expensive, the ones that I'm looking at. So I think that's just I mean, of construction, but hmm. so let's let's start with uh, with, with two things. First of all, what is a di- what's the difference? What's a saturated group head and what is uh, an E sixty one? So the E sixty one is, I think, anyone that follows this channel knows it by now, because come on, you you coffee. We talk knows. about it, right? We talk about it, and also it's the one that you always see: it's the big shiny th- lump of metal that is that is uh, um, stuck in front of the shiny box of metal that is a uh, prosumer uh, coffee machine. It was developed by Faema in 1961, and it's pretty much hasn't been changed ever since. What it is? It's a radiator. You can call it thermosiphon, but it is a radiator. So you have a hot water going in, cold water coming out, and the thermosiphoning of the water that comes in from the boiler circulates into it. And that's what heats up. I'm slapping my microphone already. And that's what uh, heats up the machine, what, what heats up the group head. 
Um, so that's the that's the thing mainly. I mean, I haven't known her to be explained as a radiator before, and that kind of makes a lot of sense because he's a radiator at the end of the day. That's that's what it is. And you so have... a lot of people get confused with the words thermosiphon. So let's just break down the technology Barney style. And a thermosiphon, simply as I understand it, so I looked into this and I thought, wow, this is going to be complicated. I better, you know, put my glasses on and get very intellectual. But mm-hmm. actually, it just it's just like whatever the word is, convection or whatever, basically means hot water. Uh, although the, I do have a very intelligent question. Hot water yes, taken up. off the top of the boiler, typically that's where the, you know, the heat rises. So you've got pressure building up. Hot water comes to the top of the boiler. It just, with the pressure, I guess, inside the boiler, the hot water goes out through a tube and into the, we call it the mushroom, the, the, the top part of yes. the E61 it goes um, there. system. Yeah, cools down. Goes down, and then as it goes down through the, it cools. Yes, and then as it cools, it 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 then falls it, down to the rest, and it goes into the bottom of the boiler where yes. it then the thing. But here's my intelligent question, Max. Mm-hmm. How does how does how if there's unless there's because there's no pump running, right? No. So if you imagine you've got the the energy of the hot water, yeah, and the pressure pushing the water. I don't know if it's, if it's just heat or, or pressure. It's but uh, just the heat. That is not just the heat. It's not pushed. It's, it's actually not pushed. It's because it's it's hot, so it's hotter. Uh, hotter substances are wider, are bigger, mm-hmm. so it's buoyant. So it's lighter because the same amount of water occupies a bigger space than the, than uh, a colder same amount. Yeah, so that always creates pressure, though, doesn't of, it? Huh? That creates pressure, doesn't it? No, it's not about the pressure. It's about oh, okay. buoyancy. If you take, um, how but look, I... let's not go down a rat hole yes. because otherwise we'll, we'll go down a rat yeah, hole. Exactly. So, but, but hot the, water the hot rises. water goes in the top, so it just yes. goes in because it's hot and it's less buoyant and it's more yes. buoyant, and it goes into the top. Then it's cooler, so it gets heavier or whatever, or more dense, and it goes down through the bottom. Yeah. What? How does it get back into the bottom of the boiler? Because it's colder. Yeah, but the bottom of oh, it's bottom colder than the water in the boiler. Yes. And so that, and because it's colder, it's more dense, it can get into the bottom. It gets into the bottom and also the, the hot water on top will push it, will push it oh, away. Oh, because there's like so that suction thing which the molecules drag other and, molecules. And the and water that. level in the boiler is above the pipes for both of these. Uh-huh. Plus, when you fill up the machine, when you have the refill, the refill water goes, in, goes through the pipe, so the pipe is always full. In fact, one of the problems of the E61 machines is you can have an airlock. Yeah, I heard about that. It's quite rare, though. Um, Less rare than you think. You can have an air bubble going in into the um, into the piping, and then it gets stuck on the top of the mushroom. That's right. Can actually block the whole thing. Doesn't work anymore. But you just need to release it. It's like bleeding a radiator. For those of us in England, bleed the radiator precisely that. Yeah, yeah. Um, So anyway, so basically. That's the E61 is this yes. is this mechanism from 1961, which was actually I realized then, and I'm I'm so glad you pronounced it FAMA because I wasn't really sure. Is it Fa- FAIMA? FAIMA. Fa- FAIMA, mm-hmm. because I was never really sure how to pronounce it. But but the, yeah, they invented it in 1961, which I was guessing why it's called the E61. Yes. Um, because that would have been a huge coincidence. And <laughs> from then to today, that I mean, there are slight differences. Yeah, I have seen slight the, different models, but it's the same. The- same system, right? The outside hasn't changed at all. The insides have been changed and been tweaked. So you have mm-hmm. different, different, um, different thicknesses, different um, um, sizes of the pipes going in, but the, the mechanism is the same. Right. And it's, I mean, it's a huge lump of brass that you heat up and that acts as a thermal mass. Right. You heat it up by thermosiphoning. So it's a slow process. Mm-hmm. And that will absorb the, the heat from the boiler. And then that is what your thermal mass is. It's detached in a way it's detached from the, uh, from the, from the boiler itself. Because yeah, because there's a pipe, there's a mechanism. There is a, a pipe. And, between the boiler and the, exactly. which is so a great the, segue into explaining what a saturated. Exactly. So the, in that case, your thermal stability is given by the mass of the group head. So you heat up the group head and use that residual heat to heat up the rest of, of the coffee. 
leave alone that you have a heat exchanger beforehand. That, that works for all of the machines. You have preheated water going into it, but your main thermal stability depends on the, on the temperature of the group head. So if you pour, if, if you do, if you pull shots, your group head is going to get cold and then you have to reheat it from the boiler, but by thermosiphoning. Gotcha. So you, you get more loss because it's a slower um, heat replenishing, if you put it, if you want to put it that way. If you have a saturated group head instead, you have the same water that's in the boiler that's actually moved into the group head. So that is your thermal mass. Yeah, the saturated head, as, I, as I've read it, and, I, and I've had one, um, mm -hmm. is basically the boiler. Well, you've had attached. one as what? Well, I, I wasn't going to say, but it's because you know, I know you're going to put me down on it, but like the Gazia Classic Pro is a very, very similar. It's, it's, it's a it's, similar concept. It's a very similar concept where the boiler sits right above yeah. the, 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 the group head. So the group head is just where the water comes out. Yes, basically, it's technically your, it's a saturated filter. group head, but the difference with the Gazia is that you use the, the, you heat up the boiler that heats up the water and everything heats up also the group head. So it's similar. It's a little different, but the, the little concept's different. the same. And you use the same, the same water. So the same water that get, get, gets mm. heated up goes into your brew. Right. While in a saturated group head like the GS3, the, the, the heated water doesn't get into the coffee. You don't brew with the boiler water. I didn't know that. Is that right? Yeah, you still have separated flows like you have in an E61. So the water that goes into your brew does, is not the same water that is in the, in the boiler, because otherwise you would have, after a while, if you pulled many cappuccinos, you would have a lot of salts, a lot of ions in your water. It's going to be an extremely hard water. Is that the same as uh, the Linear Mini? It should be, yes. Hmm. Okay. That's but I don't know, actually, the Linear Mini, the linear mini what, what, what it has. It has a saturated group head. It has a saturated group head. So yeah. then it's the same as the, the GS3, really. So it's right. the same system. But yes, your boiler water is never used for brewing because it, over time you will accumulate a lime scale in it. So you will, it will be an extremely hard water. So what? So this. sorry, what, what water is used? I'm confused now because I thought you had you, dual you boilers. I thought the water. water yeah. No, no, you take cold water. It goes oh. through the heat exchanger. So it goes through a pipe that goes inside the, the, the boiler, but it's separated from I the rest. You. So you have your water in the boiler that's hot. Pipe goes in, in copper. The water that goes through the pipe gets heated up while it goes through the pipe. So it gets preheated. And then it Jeez. moves into the brew head. And from the brew head, it gets heated up in the brew head. Now, the, the, the saturated group heads, the pipe goes all the way to the group to the group head through inside the, um, the boiler. Mm -hmm. So it's much hotter. So it can tend to uh, overshoot the temperature. While uh, an E61, it's more prone to undershoot the temperature. So your, your water might be colder than your group head. Now, my understanding, Max, is on this, we're getting to the, the crux of it. My understanding is that they have made improvements on this. So you think, well, how do you work it out? Is it all just, you know, but actually, so, uh, th 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 hold on uh, a second. But, but before we go, let me just say, <laughs> let me just say that, that, um, that when I was looking at this, I thought, well, this is, this is really got to be difficult to, to, to be able to determine, predetermine the, the, the temperature. But actually, literally using just, just physics, I mean, if you look at some of the old heat exchanger systems, mm -hmm. the, they would just work out the type of materials, the conductivity of the materials, the length that it was traveling, and they could very accurately determine um, the, uh, the, the temperature from when it left the boiler to when it actually entered the group head, which would, to me was like, like magic. Right. right. But my understanding can do is, that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke said the, you know, so any science that's sufficiently advanced looks like magic or he said something like that. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the, uh, the, the advances in software now, from my understanding, when you're talking about controlling, Temperatures with PI with PIDs mm -hmm. 
is that um, is that now, even though you're controlling the temperature most times in the boiler, yes, the algorithms are are so good that they now know, okay, well if he wants to drop two degrees cen- uh, Celsius, mm-hmm. then this is what we have to do to make that that change happen. Whereas I think my understanding was I don't know if that's the that's the great advance, but my understanding was that that before, especially on heat exchanging machines, but before on some of these 61 group heads is that you had an issue with, uh, with, with, with temperature stability. Um, not, um, not much as temperature stability because... Oh, sorry, getting the right temperature. Yes. Well, getting the right temperature, yes, because for example, there's a lot of um, machines that tend to overshoot, but that depends on the plumbing. So, for example, one of the common things in uh, the Nuova Simonelli, the Oscar, which is, mm-hmm. a, I mean, it's not an E61 group, head, but it's similar because it's the water circulates in the group head, heats it up, and then you, 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 you pour through it. It doesn't look like an E61 group head. It doesn't have all the valves and things, but it's the same thing at the end of the day. That is a smaller group head. It's lighter which means that the water has to flow faster around it. The problem in that case is that the standard setting in the Nuova Simonelli, in the Oscar 1 and 2, the the water flow was too fast, which means that it was transferring too much heat from the boiler to the group head, which means that the group head gets incredibly hot. And in fact, it has a lot of uh, overshooting temperature, flash boiling out right out of the of the group head, the, the common solution for that is a flow restrictor. So you just put a okay. flow restrictor, so, a jiggler. So, so okay, without getting too technical, otherwise, you know, um, yeah. we'll, we'll lose people. No, but, no, absolutely. It's, uh, but, but yeah, I understand. So there's difficulties, right? There's difficulties in, 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 in getting, or there have been, that people have mm-hmm. been trying to overcome in different ways to make the E61 style machines um, work uh, work mm, no, accurately is not the right well accurately and reliably but here's my yeah. question max this is what i really want to know is it, okay so the it makes complete sense to me that a saturated group head would just be easier to 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 achieve consistent results because you're not having to do the math of how it gets from point A to point B. You still have to, because your, your boiler is still going to be at 120 degrees. So you still have to, to determine the, the speed of the flow. But the main difference between the, the saturated group head and the um, uh, E61 is that in the E61, it's a slower response. So it, everything is slower. So you pull one shot ah. and then you have to wait a little bit for the next one to have it at the same temperature. Because it's it's relying on the thermal mass. The thermal mass in that case, it's not about that. So I've, I've read about on the uh, about it on the internet and I don't agree with a lot of the things that I've seen. A, a lot of, uh, one of the main arguments was that the E61 um, undershoots because it's uh, you have a smaller thermal mass than uh, in a saturated group head. Because in a saturated group head, your thermal mass is your boiler and, and the water in the boiler, because it's physically, you're moving the, the, the water into the mm. boiler, which is a more, I mean, water is crappy at transferring heat, but it's easy to move around. Heat is difficult to move around. And brass, for example, is much better at absorbing the heat, but you have to move the water. You can't heat up the brass itself, or you can in theory, but you, ha- you need resistance for that. What you have is uh, the limitation in in this is that you have a constant transfer of heat from the boiler to the group head. And if you have this transfer is too fast, you're going to overheat the group head. Okay. So consider that your your boiler is going to be at 120 degrees, which is not what you want to brew at. You want to brew at 94, 98, depends. Mm -hmm. In an ideal world where there, is, there, there are no losses, you move your water from the boiler to the, to the group head, you don't lose anything, and your group head eventually is going to, to get uh, to 120 degrees. Right? Right. But, 
but you, you so okay you, you still got some math to do yes but because there's, so you there's have a losses. shorter distance oh, no 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 it's not that you no. have losses and you have you have control on the speed at which you transfer the heat there mm -hmm. so the hot water the amount of hot water that goes around the tubing is determined by the size of the pipes the size of the tubes the bigger the tube the more heat you transfer that makes sense the group head. and that's why in the nova simonelli you just put a, a floor restrictor you put a floor restrictor and the, the group head is colder oh okay that you just have sense. to work that out so and that is something that you can do with engineering and that will give you an equation that translates the temperature in the boiler to the temperature in the in the group head and that's always going to be constant between the two because you have constant losses with a saturated group head the your group head reacts much, much faster because the the boiler determines the 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 temperature of the uh, of the group head directly because you physically have the water that becomes your thermal mass all right look look we're, we're going to run out of time so i've got a couple of because we normally talk for an hour but i got a yeah. couple of quick questions leading off of what you just said because it's quite interesting so really the advantage of the saturated group head is speed like you can change the speed the the temperature on it much faster yes now i've got a number of questions i'm going to just shoot them right out at you number one um does that mean that the uh that so first of all does it make any should you care that the temperature can be changed very quickly it because depends on the coffees the number of coffees that you make and it depends how you set up the, the machine well number of coffees is what's going to be my next question right which was does it make any difference from a consistency point of view but before that i, I mean like so if I've got a particular coffee I'm drinking and I want to do it at 93 degrees, mm -hmm. um, I set my thing for, I set my E61 group head, oh, I set, sorry, I set my machine for 93 degrees and that's what my E61 is going to put out. I'm not going to suddenly think, oh my God, I've quickly got to do this at 92 degrees or 91 or 90. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. yes, of course, I'm making a different coffee, but then I don't know how long it takes to drop down. Maybe I can do a cooling flush and I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, is it is it that important? It's probably not that important. Um, so I'm I'm just wondering how much of an advantage that is. Next, I'm going to fire them all, then you're going to ask mm -hmm. them all. Yeah. Next is 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 uh, some people have been talking about intra-shot thermal stability. That is to say, how stable the water is within a single shot. Now, I okay. actually haven't really heard that talked about a lot, but I was just reading up on it and I was sort of wondering whether that's a bit of a non-issue. So I'd like you to answer that too. Mm -hmm. And then finally, this is the big one. This is the money shot right here, right? Which is if that saturated group head is a better design, which it sounds like it is because it's got, you know, it's got something that the E61 doesn't have, right? Which is the ability to, to be faster, faster react. Why doesn't everyone do it? Because it can't be that much more expensive. Is it? Is it at a cost? It's cost. Money. It's probably patents, um, and uh, it's also more complicated to build because ah, you have everything okay. inside the boiler. Everything has to go inside the boiler, and if if you have a leak, if you have a, any sort of problem in the flow in the water flow, you have to open the machine. Ah. But the, the E sixty one, take the group head off. I can literally do it all apart. Yeah. Yeah, that's simple. You can actually take the group head apart. That makes a lot of sense. So, really, you think maybe the manufacturers are coming at a point of view of like, I don't want people to calling me up saying I've got a problem with, I don't know, they're going to have to send an engineer out or you know whatever else. Yeah. The, so the main the main question, the first question is, what's the difference between the two? As um, if you want to drop, they're both relatively fast. They're both accurate. And for what most people use them, if you use them uh, in a home environment, hmm. there is no difference whatsoever between the two. Because you know what? You're going, most of the time, 90% of the people are going to set it and forget it. Yeah. So you, you, you decide that you like coffee at 94 degrees and you're going to have it at 94 degrees for most of your, of your uh, life of use. If you change it from one to another, how often do you actually change in between of the day? Does it really matter? And also, you have to heat up a whole thing that is normally better if you leave it on for the whole day or a few hours that you, that you have it up because it's a lot of water to heat up. If you change in temperature every, every 
two hours. Well, you're probably better off with a gadget and a PID because if temperature accuracy is what, what is important for you, maybe it's not, it's not so important to have a massive machine that can do all of that because it's, it's actually very um, clunky as a method mm. to, to, to do because in a gadja, 20 minutes, less probably, 15 minutes, and you're up to temperature. Mm-hmm. In uh, or Rancilio Silvia, I mean, whichever you prefer, uh, and you can have a PID, so you know that you have the exact accurate temperature that you want. If you want to be more fancy, yes, but there are drawbacks, obviously. So it's really up to you. I don't think anyone would be able to to, to taste the difference between the two machines, because once you are at, the, at that temperature, the one coffee that you make is going to be fine. If what about you're if you're making shot after shot? Making shot after, after shot, then a, a saturated group head is better. Okay. Because you have a better better mass and you take care of it straight away in the same way that a Gaggia Classic or a Rancidio Silvia with a PID reacts faster to temperature changes. The, your, in, in the Rancidio and the Gaggia, the drawback comes from how fast can you heat up the water. In, in a GS3 in, or in a saturated group head, uh, you, you, can, you, will sort, you will sense the temperature change in the, in the boiler, which, which will uh, be addressed rather quickly because you, still, you already are at a high temperature. So you still have the same issue of the... Um, I know it. Heat Thermos exchanger, siphon. yeah, heat, no, no, in the heat exchanger uh-huh. and the pipe going into and the water heating up into the group head. But from my point of view, I think it's more reactive. It's a better, uh, it's a better way of doing it in a saturated group head. In a saturated group head. But, but can I just ask, if you're making shot after shot, but it's the same um, on a, let's say it's on a dual boiler, with an E61, so take the heat exchanger out for a second, on a dual boiler with E61, and you're making shot after shot of the same coffee, mm-hmm. will you see a performance degradation of some kind versus a, a saturated group head? You probably will, but, uh, but if it's a machine that is designed for heavy use, it's probably going to have pipes the size of, of, of my hand. So mm-hmm. you, it's probably calibrated to, to be uh, overcompensating for the, for the temperature decre- uh, depletion. So you're basically saying that um, that a design of a group head is not a, like a, what you call it, like an immutable, is that the right word? And there's there's variables in addition to the design, which can make it more appropriate for different use cases. Yes. Yeah. Got you. Fantastic. Max, we've got one minute to go and I want to pedal uh, some stuff. First thing I actually want to do is actually just um, on the news side, I like to throw these little news items in here. Um, And so I, the SCA, did, a, uh, did a, a, a sort of webinar. Actually, I think it was an Instagram live thing, which I jumped on. It was really interesting. They had an agronomist from, uh, from uh, Brazil and he was showing the, the damage. Uh, so he's on the ground. He's looking at the damage to Brazil's coffee plants. Uh, he's been there for his whole life. He used to work on a coffee farm. Now he goes and advises farmers over there. And he was saying he's talking to some farmers who've lost 40% of their crop. Uh, some farms have lost everything, um, but worse, uh, this is the frost. There's the frost in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm saying this because this is, this is going to, you're not going to notice it right now. You might notice a bit more expensive, but this is for the next year's crop. So what's going to happen is next year's crop is supposed to start soon, but it's not going to happen because so many plants have got damaged. Now, some of those coffee trees, um, they don't know the extent of the damage yet. Because it, it won't be until um, it won't be until later that they can see how whether they're flowering or not flowering or, or whatever else. Um, well, they'll actually see what the extent of the damage is. But uh, he was asked the question whether you know you know whether anything like this has, has happened before and and how long potentially this could be an impact for. And he said uh, we had a we had a drought back in two thousand. I think it was in two thousand and fourteen. And he said they never recovered from it. So they've literally, um, I think the Brazilian government is looking at a massive bailout, 
I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars to go to coffee farmers. They're trying to work out through satellite photography which farms have been badly damaged um, and compensate farmers. But the thing is, how long does it take to grow a coffee tree, Max? Do you know? A few years. Three years to, for the, till they start to flower. So even if those farmers got money in their pockets today and replanted, and this didn't happen again in the next three years, uh, it would be three more years before they got up, back up to production. Yep. And the question is whether the Brazilian government is going to fund them for three years or more. Um, so you could see not just uh, damaged, um, not just uh, a, a, a massive drop in the av- availability of Brazilian beans, but you could see um, you could see actually those farmers just leaving, exiting the the, the business entirely because they they got to earn a living. Um, but anyway, so there's that side of it just to make people aware that uh, that uh, Brazilian coffee beans are going to be very difficult to get a hold of. I was talking to a friend of mine um, who uh, works in Colombia on coffee farms, and she's saying Colombia's also got problems. And she said they don't talk as much about the issues. Um, it's very difficult to get sort of the truth out of farmers. Um, they haven't been hit as bad as Brazil, but they have not had, I think, a great harvest. Um, they're not necessarily very optimistic. So what this means is it means coffee prices are going to go up and uh, and some of your favorite blends are not going to be available. So drink them now is what I'm going to say about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, and obviously container prices also are ridiculous. Shipping at the moment, I think in some cases, has gone up by 400%. So to ship a container across 400%. Yeah. And the one exception, by the way, is going to be India because India imports a massive amounts of cashew nuts and so they've got a bunch of containers left there empty that they want to bring back. So mm-hmm. India's had a good harvest. So probably you're going to be looking at a lot of Indian coffees coming on the market. That's mm-hmm. our news update. Um, and there is also uh, Hawaii uh, just issued a, a major a major uh, warning because there was rust. Coffee leaf rust is on every Which major is island bad, now. Real bad. Every major island of Hawaii. Coffee leaf rust is the most... Um, dangerous of the diseases for coffee plants it is super uh super um what's the word spreadable (laughs) yeah it's it's a fungus contagious it's a fungus Uh, yeah rust is uh is is really really bad it's and it's difficult to contain it's difficult to treat very difficult um, to treat it's easier to prevent it than to actually treat it as a cure as a curative that's right there's a few things that's interesting the hawaiian government has has um authorized uh, pesticides mm-hmm. uh, that are not appropriate for coffee plants to be used on coffee plants coming out of Hawaii because they're desperate. Um, yeah. There's some interesting research. As a scientist, you'd be very interested in this, Max. I cannot talk about these things. Okay. But there's some interesting research going on uh, into a particular pathogen, which is a, um, there's a particular bug. I, can't remember. I think it may be in a fungus itself, uh, which eats coffee leaf rust fungus and they are looking into whether or not they can introduce this other thing which is a natural predator to the fungus to try to to destroy the the coffee leaf rust fungus so uh yeah there's lots of i mean you know if you're into this kind of stuff even if you're not um it is interesting if you have a particular like say i really like that blend of you know blah 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 you know, it, you may Take not be able to get it. <laughs> Take care of it and enjoy it because you may not get it next year. Okay, on to fun things. Woo-hoo. This is still the unopened box of the peak water filter, which we are giving away. And uh, you can win this, no, uh, no um, purchase necessary. Uh, you can win this if you're in the UK, if you're in the mainland UK. I'm going to send this to some lucky winner. Uh, all you need to do is to go down to the show notes below And there'll be a link to a place where you can register. Uh, All you need to do is put your email in there and uh, we will notify a winner every month of what they've won. We're normally giving away coffee beans. This month, we're giving away the peak water filter. And if you have not uh, used or heard of them and you are using regular water in your coffee machine, this will be a game changer. Oh, yeah. That's my new thing. Game changer uh, for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, setting up the right kind of water for coffee is completely different. Uh, by the way, they're not a sponsor of this show, they, they, and I bought this with my own money. Um, so it's just something I personally use, uh, and I do recommend it made a complete difference to me. So that's something we'll be giving away. Uh, good luck to you all. 
and we will see you next week. <laughs> Bye.